it's been amazing to be a part of a group of people who are uh, they're 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 driven to dominate they're driven to be better you just don't see a lot of that it's just it's rare to see people who are dedicated to to improvement and to and to change and to uh, making not only themselves better but those around them better that i didn't even know i was gonna that was part of the deal when you signed up for the right. project didn't realize how impactful that would be Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine, entrepreneur, and an instructor of The Project. Welcome to The Project Show here on The Project Channel. This show is for men in search of meaningful transformations in their, what we call the four F-bombs. That's the family, the fitness, the finances, and the faith. And this occurs through physical, mental, and emotional hardship and sacrifice so that they can become better husbands, fathers, entrepreneurs, leaders, and just men in general. Today, I want to welcome a special guest, a graduate of class 004, Ben Fields. Thanks hey, for Steve. coming. This is exciting. I always love getting a chance to connect with previous graduates and we get to talk on a different level than some of the experiences you might have had with me during the actual experience itself. So welcome, Ben, to the show. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you coming by. Thanks for having me. So, Ben, can you just uh, introduce yourself to the to the to the audience here? Sure. Just where where are you from? What do you do for What do you do for a living? Sure. Ben Fields uh, from Greenville, South Carolina area, and um, we've got a company called Operators Unlimited. We're in the wastewater treatment industry, serving industrial manufacturers, and been married for nine years. Have two baby girls, five and three, and uh, they bring a lot of a lot of joy to our lives. That is awesome. That's awesome. So let me ask you. So you, you, you obviously graduated the project. You made it through the other end of the, the suffering. You turned the suffering into a transformation. When you think back, when you first came across the project, whether it was on social media or a video, what was it about the project when you were scrolling through social media that you saw this and it kind of stood out to you? What spoke to you and resonated with you? You said, you know what? This is something I probably need to become a part of at this exact time in my life. What was it that really grabbed you? Yeah, I saw I saw one of the videos, one of the promo videos, and the first thing I, I saw was a lot of suffering. <laughs> and I said, number one, that scares me. And number two, I, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to put myself through this. I have to prove to myself that I can I can get through something like this. It looks really hard and uh, really exciting. So I know watching those videos, it could scare the shit out of some people, right? And make them not even follow through, not even go through and click the button because it's just, it's fucking scary when you look at it. You know, I watch it myself and this shit scares me watching. I'm like, these people are fucking crazy <laughs> to come through and actually do this. So what, what, why did you feel like you needed to go through that suffering at that point in your life? What were some of the, the struggles or road roadblocks or pain that you were experiencing at that time where, where you felt the need to put yourself through such a, a serious experience. What I saw in the in the promo video was uh, not only a lot of suffering, but a lot of the um, the words in that in that video address what I was feeling, some of the some of the deficiencies I was feeling in my leadership mm -hmm. abilities, uh, just dealing with with self doubt in my business uh, as a leader, dealing with self doubt as a as a leader in my in my home. And um, uh, a lot was said around that. And so that's one of the things I really wanted to address. That, that felt that pain in that moment even more um, as it was highlighted. So it sounds like you were lacking some confidence, maybe some self-belief. And one of those four F-bombs is, is the faith. And it, that faith doesn't necessarily mean religious. If you have religious faith, that's great. It's going to be a huge asset to you. But we're talking about from the perspective of faith in your belief, in your abilities to level up and reach your goals in your family, your fitness, and your finances. So it sounds like you were having some issues more on the faith side as, as a leader. Is that, is that where you were at? Yeah, that's right. And something I've dealt with for, for years and years and has been accentuated as I've uh, had more leadership responsibilities and opportunities. And so uh, those, those gaps have been uh, highlighted. And uh, so I, I felt that in that moment as I was, as I was seeing some of, the, some of the promo material for and the it project. It sounds like that was popping up in a lot of areas of life, not just in the business, but also <laughs> we call it, you know the business field, from the battlefield, business field, in the home field. How was that affecting maybe your relationships with your wife at home, just having this lack of, of belief and a little doubt in yourself. Is that, is that affecting your relationships and the way you're leading your family? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, my, my family looks to me for, for that leadership and so dealing with the, the self-doubt or having the self-doubt is, is uh, impeding my, my, my ability to lead them well. Um, I'm, I'm focused on myself and, and where I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not good enough or, or um, you know, just, just having that self-doubt is, is keeping us from achieving more as a family. Yeah, definitely. And something like that doesn't just pop up as an adult, right? So where do you think that, that came from? What do you think the foundation of that 
lack of belief in yourself and that self self doubt. Where do you think it really rose up from? Uh, from your history, the past, or where do you think that came from? Uh, I'm I'm the third of three, and so uh, last child. Uh, maybe I didn't have a lot of responsibility put on me uh, growing up, mm -hmm. and so was able to to operate in the in the shadows and, and behind the scenes and, and get away with it. And it was you know it was it was fine, but um, that's not that's not the role of a leader. And uh, that's that's one of the things that got highlighted for me as I went through the project was, hey, we can't we don't see you, we can't hear you. Uh, um, and is that has that been true for you in 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 most of your life? And it was it had. I mean, uh, I remember Matt, instructor Matt, uh, calling that out to me pretty pretty directly. He said, mm -hmm. "You feel like you're you're not seen. You feel like you're not heard, because that's what we're experiencing right now uh, on the other side of it." And so um, that was that was highlighted pretty quick for me as I went through the project. That's awesome. That's that's a great discovery that you had you had there. I remember that moment exactly. That was a huge breakthrough for you. I remember that. And so let's take it back. So you, you you saw the videos. It's scary, but you knew you needed something like that to break out of those shadows because you, you knew whether you knew it or not subconsciously, that's where you were living in, in those shadows and not really breaking into your full potential as a leader, as a husband, as a father. Now you get to the point where you're like, all right, I'm going to register for this. What were, what were some of the hesitations you had once you got to that point, especially if you were lacking some self-belief? What were some of the hesitations you had, whether it comes to... You were a little afraid to do it. The the cost of it. Where, where were you? What was the hesitation before you actually followed through with registering? Yeah, the first one was definitely physically. Can I even physically do this? Physically, am I able to to get through something that 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 looks as hard as it does? Uh, that was my first hesitation, and, and I didn't know the answer to that. <laughs> uh, but a lot of what was communicated uh, on the front end was, "Hey, it's it's not about um, it's not about uh, you know how physically fit are you. It's about how mentally strong are you." And so um, that helped kind of eliminate that excuse because that's that's ultimately what that is 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 you know I can't I can't do this physically, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to even step forward. But that was my first first question, and and then cost was another one. I didn't know what it was on the front end, uh, but uh, as we worked through the process and through the interviews on, on the front end, um, you know, I started realizing it probably doesn't matter what the cost is of this of this program. It's something that is going to be pivotal and uh, and transformational, and you can't really put a price tag on that. So that that excuse went by the wayside pretty quickly as well. And you're speaking to the physical part. I remember because what, what people out there don't realize, they see all the cool videos that we do, all the physical evolutions, all the craziness that we do, and it's awesome, it's fucking awesome. You see it. When it comes down to it, the physical, you probably realize the physical part, as hard as it was, was the easiest of the entire experience. It was the, the mental and the emotional part that was the real challenge. And I remember your group, when you, you, you happened to have a shovel and you were digging a hole for whatever reason that you were digging a hole, we won't go into the details, we don't want to spoil things for the people out there, but I remember your group had to dig your holes. And you were at a time of year when the ground, and we, we specifically found a good spot that it was it was fucking rock solid. Like that was the we've never seen the ground that hard before, and it was the time of year you were there, and we literally left you uh, in attendance with just some of the junior instructors, and we left for I don't even know 45 minutes, an hour. We had to go set some things up for the next evolution, and we came back. I don't know. It, it might have been two hours later. I don't even know. And your group was just fucking hammering away. You were there for two. You might have only got two inches, but you, your group did not stop. There was just persistence there. No, no physical ability can make you do that. Like that's impossible. What you did was impossible physically, but somehow we came back and you were all going full speed, every single one of you. And so it goes, to, it goes to the point that you didn't even know what you were capable of. It looked like, because we came back, we were like, we thought you were all going to just be done sitting on the ground. Like, <laughs> fuck this. I'm, I quit. I'm not digging anymore. And you guys were digging it. You were getting like a millimeter every 30 minutes. You weren't even getting anywhere, but you wouldn't stop. And you were done physically long before that. It, it's impossible to go that fast, nonstop physically. So it's, it's great to your point of, you didn't think you could do it physically. The physical part ended up being the easy part for you. The, yeah. and, and then eventually you flipped that switch and the mental and emotional part seemed like it, it took over for you. Is that kind of where you were at when it, when it came to that? Yeah, yeah. At a certain point, uh, at a certain point, the you hit your physical limit, and uh, and uh, to be able to push past that is all is all mental, and so uh, you hit that a lot. We hit that a lot during the during the seventy five hours. Many points where. Um, you've you've just moved past your your physical abilities. It's not about your abilities anymore. It's just about your mental toughness and your mental strength, um, and that's what that's what gets you gets you by. But yeah, I, re I remember that evolution, and my uh, my spade actually broke, chipped 
Uh, we were sparks were flying as we hit bedrock, and <laughs> you were on pure fucking concrete. I remember it. That yeah. was crazy. That was crazy. We came back. We were, we were impressed. We we're like they, they're they're workhorses. Those are some workhorses. <laughs> you guys are going to town. That was that was impressive. And so let me ask you. It might have been at that point, or maybe a point before that. Throughout this process, throughout the, the 75 hours, there's a point where every single man, whether he admits it or not, he can lie and, and not say that he ever considered quitting. But there is a spot in your mind, because I've considered quitting these before. I didn't quit them, but I've considered it. So if I know if I've done it, I know every fucking man out there has done it. There had to have been a point where you consider quitting it. I don't know if you remember the point. It really doesn't matter. But what was it that, what was the trigger in your head that made you not quit, that made you keep going and and End up, end up coming out on the other end with the transformation. What made you not quit? What did you have to tell yourself in your head? Yeah, I had a, I had a couple things uh, to, to start with. Whenever I started feeling my eyes drift towards that bell and my mind start thinking, you know, what if? And just I, I could see the path headed, headed in the wrong direction. First thing I would do is just say, no, 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 in my head. And that was all. So just to get my head out of that space. And then, and then follow that up with thinking about my wife and my two baby girls. And how I was not gonna, I was not gonna quit on them. Uh, I was not gonna go back home and say uh, I, I couldn't get through it because it was too hard. Couldn't get through it because it was too painful. Uh, um, I wasn't gonna do that. And so uh, that was a big, uh, that that was a big um, moment for me to to go back to to think about them and just not not giving up on them. So obviously the family and picturing your family, but even before that, you said just just saying no, 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 no. Look, think about how. It's so fucking simple, but powerful, right? Yeah. Just to have those triggers in your head to make you not quit. So I'm sure that helps you in other areas of life when you're starting to feel weak, you're starting to feel vulnerable, you're starting to lose it or procrastinate. It's so simple. You could just have those triggers like that yep. and, and change it and change your whole frame, mind frame and, and trajectory of where you're going. So that's something that that's simple. freaking awesome. Something that simple can be life changing. Absolutely. Yeah. And you had, a few, you had a few guys in your group that quit, right? I mean, do you remember those moments specifically when they had to go and ring the bell? Yes, They had absolutely. to walk. I mean, that's, that's a, I get, we get the chills every time it happens because it's a man walking in front of all the other men ringing a bell three times. I don't know if you remember those moments specifically. But I do. Yeah, we remember every single one of those yep. and the sound of the, the music of the bell every single time. Yeah. So that's awesome. So speaking of that and speaking of these evolutions and having fun digging for hours in the, in the bedrock of the <laughs> earth of this rock that we're spinning on, what was your least favorite either evolution or experience or or moment during those seventy five hours? Uh, my least my least favorite was the uh, when we were digging digging those holes. Uh, I, I I can't go into all the details, but that was probably um, part of that evolution was was the moment where I didn't want I still didn't want to quit, but I didn't know if I was going to make it through. This was a pass fail evolution, and uh, I didn't know if I was going to make it through. And um, that and you're was not the, talking about the actual digging. You're talking about what you did after the digging. After, yeah. I'm yeah. sure there's videos and pictures out there. They have an idea. It's, a, it's an evolution called the dash where, fuck it, we'll just tell you. You're literally burying yourself alive to, yeah. to reflect on how are you living your life from the moment you're born to the moment you die, that dash in between. How are, how are you? So what was it about that 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 was getting to you? I didn't realize uh, what we were actually going to do. But once uh, once we got into the, the ground and, and started getting covered up, uh, felt like I couldn't, uh, couldn't, couldn't breathe really well. And th at that point I was just managing panic. Uh, so I was trying to, trying to calm down and wasn't having a whole lot of su success. Didn't know how long I was going to be in there. And so it was just a taking a second at a time, second at a time. All right, get through the next breath, get through the next breath, calm the breath down. Uh, uh, but that was, there were a couple moments in there where I felt like I need to sit up. I need to, I need to get out. <laughs> <laughs> somehow, somehow you made it through that. That's yeah. freaking awesome. And on, on that note, what, what, what was your favorite evolution? What was it that, where did you have the most fun or the evolution you enjoyed the most? The, the, I think I had the most fun in the, the, the FTX evolution, uh, going through the house, uh, through all the different, uh, obstacles and, uh, didn't know what was coming next, but, uh, getting hit with, uh, uh with different tests, really. Uh, there, there are a few Let's different tests we don't want, there. The FTX, we definitely don't want to give too much because that is uh, a top secret information. But yeah, I hear you, the of, FTX. And a lot of fun, though. That was a, that was a, that was a ton of fun, uh, that, that, that evolution. Yep. And that's interesting because I guarantee if you had done the FTX, and that's on the final day, that's kind of the final, it's a fuel training exercise, your final main, main evolution to pass. If that had happened on day one, that FTX, do you think it would have been a little differently and not so much fun? That's a good question. That is a good question. 
Probably. Yeah, it probably uh, would have given me, uh, uh, mentally, I probably would have, uh, I don't know, gone through the rest of the rest of the week in a kind of different mindset, didn't know what was coming. I don't know. I think I think the what what prepared us for that final evolution, uh, getting through the, the physical part, getting through the, the mental part. Uh, and then um, a lot of the a lot of some of the the interactions with our with our brothers and uh, those those peer reviews and um, the times where where you all really called us out on are we are we standing up for our brothers or are we are we throwing them under the bus mm -hmm. um, uh, just the the do it you know what's right will always be right that idea um, uh, the right thing is always the right thing uh, that that was a big deal in getting through that so probably would have failed uh, a lot more parts of that 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 evolution if I'd done it on the front end yeah that's that's kind of the point I was getting at so think I want you to think about it that you came in there with low self-confidence and and low self-belief and now you're telling me like the FTX that's that's the the hardest part of the entire the entire program that really is the hardest part it's the biggest mental emotional and physical challenges all crammed in a short amount of time that you need to pass it's literally one thing thrown at you after the next and you're here telling me i don't know if you even hear yourself and this should just this should alone give you another boost of fucking confidence you're taking the hardest craziest aspect of what we did and saying that that was the most fun to you think about that like you that you had some major breakthrough in this throughout those 75 hours that you came in with such low self confidence and belief in yourself and now you ended up Blasting through the, the the field training exercise, the biggest final main test, and saying, oh, "That was fucking fun." That's yeah. crazy. That's just to hear it now is like showing me the the growth that you've had because it's that's not intended to be fun. That's intended <laughs> to be the opposite of fun. But the fact that you were able to flip that switch, come over the tipping point, that now you realize, all right, everything is done for a purpose. That that's freaking awesome. And that that, that yourself, just hearing now me say this should make you leave here today with another boost of confidence up yeah. to the next level. Because that that's freaking awesome. That you took the hardest thing and. That ends up being the funnest thing. That, that's crazy. I, yeah, it says a lot about the the the, the seventy five hours and and what what leads up to that moment and that evolution. Uh, you all always say during the during the seventy five hours, you say everything we do is intentional. There's a purpose behind everything we do, even if it seems crazy, even if it seems nonsensical. There's a purpose to it, uh, and I think that what you just said proves that. Uh, it's it's preparation for getting through something like uh, like that FTX evolution. Yeah. So speaking of pain and suffering and struggles. A lot of times, like let's say during a certain moment or evolution, you're suffering, it sucks, you think it's horrible. But I want you to think back that after completing some of this stuff, what were some of the moments that now after the fact, you look back and as much as it seemed like suffering at the time, now you're like, you know, that was, that was either pretty fucking funny or pretty fun to, to be able to do that. But at the time you didn't think that, but now you're realizing, because I remember in the Marine Corps, we'd be going through some hellacious training and torture and it was just horrible and miserable and, and whatever. And then once it's done, we're sitting around and just almost to tears laughing about it and, and reflecting on it, how much fun we had and how fun it really was. Any, any moments like that that really stick out for you? I think around the, uh, the ice, the, the, the ice baths, uh, that was probably one of the things I, I was concerned about the most because I didn't know how, how well I'd do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I might, I might freak out in the middle of, a, of, of, of being in that cold water. Uh, but those moments were, were, were some really good ones. Not only because our bodies were pretty broken at that point, it felt good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> but um, we had a we had a one of the guys from uh, he's from from Europe, and uh, he got into that that ice ice bath and and just got in it like it was it was second nature to him. That was home for him. It was like that another was day at the office for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was that was fun. That was hilarious. But in the moment, you know, we were uh, you know, filling up the 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 buckets of uh, with ice and then we had overfilled and so you guys made us put as much ice as we could in our mouths and run back and spit it out into a ditch and, and just running back and forth. And, uh, um, so in the I must have blacked that, out because I don't remember any of that. I, <laughs> I think I could black out and go into instructor mode. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we screwed up a lot during that, and so uh, we, we paid for it. Uh, and so in the moment, that doesn't feel good, but, but we get to look back and, and you know, La it, it brought us closer together as, as brothers just going through that pain and so we get to look back and, and laugh and, and enjoy that now and then you probably realize that that ice bath is a fucking gift like yeah. your body is beaten and broken and you think it's going to be torturous and suffering and it is when you're in there but then you get out you're like I actually feel better now I feel good I feel revived it, it's, it's, it's some regenerative power to it so yeah. that, that's awesome Absolutely. that you had that discovery so now let's go through graduation and what were some of the immediate 
I know there's going to be some other aha moments you had over time. What were some of the immediate, tangible effects you had after graduating the project? Let's say, like, literally from finishing the graduation dinner ceremony, going home, day one. What were some of the immediate, like, bam, like, holy shit, this is, this is fucking life-changing. I'm already, and, and that you're able to implement immediately. What were some of those kind of intangible things? The, the, the first one was a, just a huge confidence boost. Just being able to get through it, uh, realizing that, that uh, I, I, di I didn't quit, I didn't ring the bell. Uh, that, that was a huge confidence boost. Um, uh, I remember I got my, my suit on for, for the graduation dinner and I found a note in my, in my suit pocket that my wife had written to me. And she told me in, in the note, she said, I'm so proud of you. Um, and she didn't know if I was gonna if I was gonna get through yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but um, in that moment, that, I mean, just that that along with um, with everything else is just. A, um, I think the 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 most immediate thing was just a, a really big confidence boost. Um, and and what I came in with dealing with that self doubt that was huge for me. Um, so that was probably the, the the first thing that I that I noticed. And as much as it sounds like just a basic generic thing, right? Oh, I have more confidence, but you know the real life effect of that, how it affects your business as a leader, dealing with, you know, you're leading a team, right? At your, in, your, in your company, you're leading a team, having more confidence with your family and your wife, like that's massive. It sounds like generic, because everyone talks about that like on social media, whatever, you need to boost your confidence, but actually experience it through suffering and through transformation. It's almost like a rebirth, it sounds like. You walked out. It's transformation. A whole total different man, almost. Yeah, it's transformation. You, you. Uh, it starts affecting how you, how you make decisions, the decisions you make, how you interact with the people that um, that uh, you work with, that you lead, your family. Uh, it, it is subtle, but it makes a huge a huge difference. Um, so that was that was that was a powerful immediate effect for me. So that was the more immediate thing. Now I'm sure it's now been. You were here since March, so it's been several months now since then. So I want to go into what are some of the the longer lasting effects like you. As you probably noticed, weeks go on and maybe a month later, you have this aha moment. You're like, that's why instructor Steve made me do that crazy fucking thing that I thought was useless, but now I see why we did it and it pops up in your life. But even before we get, get to that, you're here now today because you're, we have a, a, another class starting tomorrow and you volunteer time out of your life, uh, you know, away from your family, away from, from your work to come here and volunteer time to help us as a junior instructor for the upcoming class. And I think a crazy dynamic of that is one of the candidates in this class was actually in your class who rang the bell. I think that's, that's a huge, powerful point. Like you're gonna be able to be there with this guy who was in your group that rang the bell. Now you're coming back to assist it. So what, what are some of the, obviously longer, obviously it had some longer term effects because you're back here now several months later to give back, like to, to, to pay it forward. And it's gonna be, I'm sure, a huge impact to this, this guy that's coming back a second time. So what were some of the longer term benefits that you've seen and growth uh, opportunities you've had since since graduating now that you've had some time to kind of live through it well one of the things that i uh, i did i went back and, and looked at the survey i filled out in on the front end of all this before i before i came to the project the the survey answering some questions about uh what what the what what my goals were and and one of the things that i that i put in there was that uh as in 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 my business i wanted our our team to operate with more candor and um, I look back at that almost probably close to a year ago is when I filled that out. Uh, I'd forgotten about it, uh, but um, we've, that's something that over the last several months our team has, has intentionally increased. And I can, I can point back to uh, the experience at the project and building not only building the confidence, but um, just understanding, say what needs to be said. Um, the right thing is, is always the right thing. Uh, that's that's been a part of a uh, shift in our in our company culture uh, and so that's taken more time to flesh out but it's been mm -hmm. a longer term effect of, of uh, some of the things that I that I learned and experienced uh, it's an awesome that's awesome that happened an awesome observation and you said your your companies has had their a record year this year right yes. During all this craziness all this lockdowns and quarantines and riots and elections and you somehow have come out and had a record year you said right that's right yeah, yeah that's yeah. freaking awesome record record revenue year and uh, uh grown a lot this year and um hoping to hoping to continue that straight and you do have a team that you lead right a, a team of individuals that you lead that you're responsible for for coaching and developing and guiding yeah yeah we have a leadership team and uh that i lead that team and uh they have their their departments that they lead as well and so um that's uh yeah that's uh, that's that's how our company is structured so that's a huge weight on your shoulders and a huge responsibility in, in your company. And 
to think back to the project, those times when you said, Instructor Matt, and I, I remember several times, think about it, you're face to face with a man having to look them in the eyes and either transmit feedback or receive feedback without getting your fucking feelings hurt, without taking it personal, realizing, wow, I just need to, to sit the hell down and shut the hell up and listen to this person's telling me so that I can grow and evolve. And it sounds like it's translated massively into your, your company because you're now saying you're, you're able, your team is able to operate with more candor. And that does take time because you have to build the trust and the relationships with them. So that's not something that could happen immediately with them, but it looks like over time, the way that during the project, another man looked you in the eyes and said, listen, here's what you need to do. Here's what you're fucking up. Don't take this personal. Don't be a little bitch about it. But you've taken that and actually implemented it into your, your, your professional life. That yeah. sounds like what happened. Yeah, to, to hear that feedback is, is one thing, but then what, what do you do with it? Uh, how do you how do you take it and, and say, all right, is this something I need to change in my life or is this something that I don't? But to go and, and, and realize, be self-aware enough that this is a gap and then, all right, what do I do with that gap? How do I shore that up? So uh, that's that's been another uh, another big thing. Uh, I get feedback from from our team, and um, uh, I've I've heard that feedback before that that instructor Matt gave me, and mm -hmm. um, just in different ways. And so uh, it's been validated <laughs> over right. and over. And so that's been something that I've been able to work on and um, and really make some progress in, uh, which has been a really big deal. That's awesome. And. So on that note, the, the feedback and just that or the other, the confidence boosters, how has this impacted now months later, just your personal relationships in your, in your personal life, whether it's with your wife or even your leadership team? How is this boost in confidence and the ability to, to give and receive feedback, how has this affected your, your relationships in general? For for me, it's been it's been about communication. So, uh, I've I've traditionally not communicated enough, uh, not made my voice heard enough, and uh, that's that's one of the things that that's the feedback I got at the project. That's I've, it's feedback I've heard before, but didn't really know what to do with, and so um, that's that's changed. Uh, it's not it's not at 100 percent, but it's been um, it's been uh, moving in the right direction, and so uh, um, that's been a that's been a, that's been a big change for me personally. Personally, and I've continued to grow in that area. That's awesome. As you know, one of the one of the true values of the project and the real beauty of this program is becoming part of this lifelong brotherhood that we have. How is having access to this brotherhood? How has that affected your life in general in these last few months since you graduated? It's been amazing to be a part of a group of people who are uh, are so driven and uh, they're, they're, they're driven to dominate, they're driven to be better. Uh, you just don't see a lot of that in, in, in circles that, that, that I'm in. You know, it's just, it's rare to see people who are, um, are so dedicated to, to improvement and to, and to change and to uh, making not only themselves better, but those around them better. Uh, so that's been, that's been so uh, inspiring for, for one thing, but then, uh, just uh, uh, it's 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 encouraging and it's uh, it helps you continue in your own, your own growth journey to be surrounded by people like that. So um, that's been a that's been a, a really awesome part of it that I didn't even know I was gonna that was part of the deal when you signed up for the right. project. Didn't realize how impactful that would be. Yeah, definitely. And so did, was that something you were lacking in your life beforehand, not having that circle of of men and specifically men outside of your family and outside of your your industry because that's really what an outside team is you have your inner circle but if your inner circle sucks you need that outside team who's going to have a different perspective because you go to your family members you go to people maybe you work with or people that you're leading they're just going to tell you a lot of times what you want to hear mm. not what you need to hear so do you feel like having that kind of outside team of of kick-ass motivated hungry men would you feel like that was something that was lacking beforehand before you, you got into the project yeah, I didn't have I didn't have a, a, a group, especially that size. Uh, our, our class graduated eight eight guys, um, but then there were you know three other classes before us that are that are part of this this brotherhood, and so um, definitely didn't have that amount of people that that are that are this this driven and this focused on on improving and and uh, and making a difference. Um, yeah, I haven't had that in my life before in, in that way. You met any many guys that were not in your class? Have you met many of them in person or has it mostly just been on, online so far? Uh, it's all been been online. Uh, met a couple guys uh, just uh, today, but most of, most of the time it's, uh, most of the guys I know are, are, are um, have been online that, that aren't, that And you've made some connections class. with them from yes. other classes, like you're getting to know them and, cause you have, you have that common bonding in place that you have survived the suffering of the project and made it through the other end of the transformation. Yep. 
and you've met some here now that you're in town this week. I'm guessing you met some from other classes. Yes. Now? Yeah. Yeah. And and just the 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 guys being vulnerable, even if it's online, being open and transparent and vulnerable about what they're working on, what they're struggling with, and um, what they're dealing with in life. Uh, that's been a that's been uh, important, I think, for for us to to get to know each other and grow closer together and uh, just understand what we're dealing with and where we want to grow. And as you meet them, you probably feel like you you already know them a little bit because you yeah. have that common factor of you've been through the suffering like there's something to be said about sharing that suffering with someone even if you didn't do it at the same time absolutely there's a bond there that that we all went through the same uh, the same suffering and we all decided not to quit and we all got through it uh, and that's uh, um, there's 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 a common thread in there that that, that everyone has I think that uh, has been able to graduate uh, so um, yeah it's a, it's a pretty cool bond that's that's awesome so let me ask you what would you what would you say to any viewers out there that are considering joining the project that maybe you are in the position you were in the beginning when you were a little hesitant or whatever, but they, they know they need this, but they're either afraid or think it's too expensive. What's, what's something you would say to someone like that that is kind of thinking about it, but having those hesitations? Probably that if you're having hesitations, uh, it means you really, you really need it. Uh, because you're, uh, y you believe that you probably already are telling yourself that you can't do it. And uh, that's a, um, that's a huge indicator that you need something like this to, to not just improve your confidence, but get you, uh, for me, it was a, it was a fork in the road moment. Uh, and I knew it would be, and that's, that's one of the things that got me to sign up was this would be a moment I could look back on a milestone and see my life took a different trajectory because I did this. That's fucking awesome. That's awesome. So I always like to finish with this. What are you know, two or three things you would tell to a, now someone who is registered, someone who's just waiting for their class coming up. We have a class starting here that you're here to help out with in, in actually tomorrow. What's a couple of key points of advice you'd give to someone that's actually already registered and they're just in the bullpen waiting, you know, on deck to, to start? What's a couple of things you, piece of advice you would have for them? Yeah, uh, the, the train, train your body for sure. That's, that's gotta be a part of it. But as you're training your body, train your mind. Uh, I, I'd say that's the that's an even bigger part of this. So, uh, as you're as you're running, as you're doing your push-ups, as you're doing uh, some of these different routines, uh, don't you know? Don't put your headphones in. Don't drown out your thoughts with music because that's what you're going to be hearing during those 75 hours. You're going to be hearing your 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 mind's going to be talking to you. Your inner bitch is going to be talking to you, and you need to get very familiar with what that sounds like. Because and, and 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 you get you need to start learning how to deal with that, um, because that's what's gonna that's what you're gonna be hearing in your head. It's gonna be telling you to quit. It's gonna be telling you it's too hard. It's gonna be telling you it's not worth it. It's gonna be telling you it's pointless. And you need to you need to hear that and recognize it so that when you're going through the 75 hours of the project, you know how to shut that down. You know how to move past it because that's going to be the that's going to be the biggest part of, of being able to graduate. That's awesome. That's right there alone is is worth the price of admission of just watching this show is to learn to hear your own thoughts, learn to deal with your own thoughts, how to not shut them out or ignore them by just blasting some music and process them, work through them and realize that's just part of being a, a fucking human, dealing with those emotions, that inner bitch that's trying to come out that's negotiating with you at all times. So that right there is an awesome take home point. I appreciate you sharing that with me. So I wanna thank Ben Fields for joining me on Absolutely. the project show. So listen, men out there, if you need to level up and kill the inner bitch and unleash the beast to become a better father, a better husband, a better leader, a better man. That's what the product is all about. That's what this show is all about. So if you've gained anything, even one little bit of information from this show that has impacted your life, just put a comment down below. Let me know what was your big key take home about this show, as well as give me a like and a subscribe to this show so you don't miss any future episodes. The project is all about killing the inner bitch and unleashing the beast. I will talk to you soon. You are freaking awesome. No excuses.